So, you want to make a YouTube channel. You have an account, a name, a channel icon, a banner, and ideas for videos. All you need now is the software and know-how to go and make them. So yeah, it turns out loads of creative and video making software is very expensive. You better start saving up money right now if you want to be able to purchase all of that expensive junk. Until then, no YouTube video making for you. But does it really have to be that way? No! Free software like GIMP, Audacity, DaVinci Resolve, and OBS have made it incredibly easy to become a YouTuber, and most importantly, completely free! So, in this video, I'll be summarizing what GIMP, Audacity, DaVinci Resolve, and OBS do, and I'll be teaching you how to use them to make a video. It's also important to note that all the software used in this video is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, and many Linux systems. If you want to know more about the software used in this video, or you want to find out more free software you could be using, then check out the playlist in the corner. And just in case you're a bit skeptical, the video you're watching right now was made for absolutely no money using software that is completely free. So yeah, stick around to learn how to make real YouTube videos without spending a single cent on software. Here are the timestamps, let's go! Okay, so the majority of the software featured in this video can be easily downloaded and installed on Linux just by going to the terminal and typing in sudo apt get install and then like audacity and it will install audacity for you. I already have it installed so it doesn't do anything. But to install DaVinci Resolve, you have to actually run a script because the latest version of DaVinci Resolve 16 is only compatible with CentOS. You have to make it compatible with Debian. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the site called um, Make Resolve Deb. It's really good a script made by somebody, Daniel Tavesson, and you can download it here and you get it and it's, it's really, really good. You also need to go to the actual DaVinci Resolve website and um, download the software itself. So click on the download button, click on either Mac OS X, Windows, or Linux. In this case, Linux, obviously, and write your details in, and it will download it for you. So once you're done, you should have two files in your downloads directory, at least two new files. Make Resolve Deb the script, and then you resolve the actual program. Unzip the Make Resolve Zeb, uh, put this here, then unzip the DaVinci Resolve, just take out the .run file and put it there. It will take a while to extract. Now that that's done, we can basically just move these to the trash. And now we should open up the terminal and CD slash home slash the username slash downloads if you put them in the downloads folder of course and uh, start running some things okay so before we do anything we should probably install the required software we need to actually run the script and this is it except uh i just changed this line real quick that's that's what you need to type into your terminal install Cerezo and libsl 1.0 and it will install that and i already have it installed but you have to install that to be able to run the script. The rest of this can pretty much be done from the Make Resolve Dev site. It gives you everything you need. So for example, how to extract things and how to actually run the script. In this case, we're going to copy and paste this. Except that's not exactly precise because as you can see here, it's 16.1.2 uh, underscore Linux dot run. We change this 16.1.2-1.sh. Dash and it should just work. As you can see, it's working it will take a little while but eventually once this process is complete if there's no errors then it will basically make a debian file a dot deb installation file for davinci resolve okay so once everything is unpacked and we have our debian file all in its 952.6 megabyte glory then we can go and actually install it by copying this command and obviously changing the number be appropriate with our version so in this case we'll copy that and we'll change this to 16.1.2-1 underscore amd64.dev and once i press enter it will go and install that package and that's 
DaVinci Resolve installed onto your computer. That's pretty much it in terms of Linux stuff, Audacity, OBS, all of that's easily installable through either your software package manager or uh, just the terminal through the default Ubuntu like PPA thing. So um, yeah, back to the actual tutorial. This has got to be the easiest one yet. Audacity's interface is incredibly simple and easy to use. You got your pause button, your play button, your stop button, your go back one track button, your go forward one track button, and the record button. Then you got your microphone levels button, you can click on it to start monitoring the microphone levels, you got your audio output levels, you got your microphone recording level, and you got your regular audio volume. You also got the playback speed, and your audio devices, so your audio driver thing, your input device, the channels you're using, and your output device. Then you got your tools. So you got the selection tool, you have the envelope tool, you got the draw tool, then obviously you got your zoom tool, you got your time shift tool, and you got your multi-tool. I'll only really be explaining the selection tool and multi-tool because that's the most important ones. Recording in Audacity is incredibly easy. Either you press the recording button or press the R key on your keyboard. This is a test recording in Audacity. If this is working, you should be able to hear my voice. To stop recording, you can either press the stop button here, or you can press the space bar. Say I want to crop these parts out of the audio, so for example this part. All I have to do is click somewhere, drag, and press Ctrl X to cut it out. I can do the same here, but what if I want to be a little more precise? Instead of using the zoom tool, I can hold down Ctrl and scroll with my mouse wheel while using my mouse as a name. So if I want to zoom in here, just put my mouse over here, Zoom here, and zoom out by scrolling backwards. I'm gonna zoom here, and then I'm gonna be more precise with my cropping. Control X, and that's gone, and we have our audio. Just gonna zoom over here and crop this part out as well. Let's imagine we wanna make this louder. We can either press Control A to select everything, or we can just drag along the section of audio we wanna make louder. Then we go to the effects section, and then amplify. Here we can increase the amplification, but it won't let me be on a certain point because it's not allowing the clipping. If I do allow clipping, then it makes the sound a little bit distorted and possibly a little sound like this. Hello guys, it's me, Denshi, and today we'll be learning how to use audacity but that will only be for the really loud parts of the audio and it's not really a big problem let's do some more effects for example reverb reverb makes it sound like you're in a big room i would only really recommend messing around with the room size although you can mess around with these other things just press ok and that's our reverb you can press ctrl c to undo any changes as well and that applies for pretty much every program we're using today use ctrl c to undo any changes now we can do some more precise audio volume changes with the multi-tool selecting it you see there's this little gray and slightly lighter bars on our audio what this is is an interface to set up audio points so essentially if i want to make a certain section of the audio louder i can just place a point over here and increase it. Since there's only one point, it's only really doing it in one dimension, so it's gonna make the entire audio louder. If I wanna change this, however, I can make another point and change it so I can adapt the audio, change the volume over time, like a little bit like keyframes. And this will be important for later because we're going to be using keyframes in the video editor. So for example, if I wanna make this first section not that loud, I can just place two keyframes, one at the start and one at the end, as you can see the audio kind of changes because I've placed these keyframes to change the volume. This is a very complex feature and I rarely use it. The extent to which I use Audacity is pretty much just audio recording and cropping. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to record a short sample of audio and we're going to use it while video editing. So just Control A, Control X to deselect everything, switch to the selection tool, and record a short sample of audio. This audio is being recorded in Audacity, and this video is being edited in DaVinci Resolve. It's important to note that this video is part of a tutorial on how to teach people how to make videos for free. Free is an interesting word, because it has two meanings. There's free as in liberty, and free as in you don't have to pay anything for it. At least in the Linux world, we use the words Libra for liberty, and gratis for something you don't have to pay anything for. I can use a free and open source software like OBS to record video on my screen as well. This, for example, is a web page, and I'm zooming into it right now. That's pretty much it in terms of video making. Thank you very much for watching. Anyway, I recorded that and edited that in Audacity in around, what, a minute? Now, moving on to the next section of the tutorial.
Now, I would consider video editing an art. Like drawing and music making, it can definitely be taught to some level, but loads of it is up to personal preference and what generally feels good to you. Because of that, I will only really be explaining the perks of DaVinci Resolve and some basic tips and tricks. I will not be explaining the basic concepts of video editing like keyframes and stuff, because if I did, then this video would probably be 16 hours long. So let's get started. When you open DaVinci Resolve, you will see this little menu over here. Your projects will be stored here. You can create a new project by pressing the new project button or by double clicking the untitled project icon. If you click this little button here, you can have access to your databases, although I rarely use this feature. This button over here is for scaling so you can see more or less. This button over here is to sort them. You can press this button over here to get information on your projects, and this button over here to change the way they're displayed. You can also search for projects by pressing the search icon. Anyway, let's create a new untitled project by double clicking on the untitled project button over here. When you first create a new project, it will be thrown into the cut menu. The cut menu is really useful for doing the first cut of all your footage. So essentially everything except color grading or any editing tricks. Important notes, before you do anything in DaVinci Resolve, Go to this little settings icon and make sure you have your timeline frame rate and playback frame rate not only equal to each other but set to the frame rate that you want. In my case, I have the resolution set to 1920 by 1080 and 60 FPS. I also have my video format set to HG 1080p 60 because all my videos are in 1080p 60 FPS. You can modify other things here as well, but I don't really really mess around with the FPS and resolution. Once you've settled your stuff, I would recommend going to presets right clicking on your current project and clicking on save as user default config. This way every new project you will create will have the settings you set here. The reason I'm saying this is because by default DaVinci Resolve has its FPS set to 24 and I realize that a few people might start editing and then realize that they've made a huge mistake by not having their video in 60 or 30 FPS. If you start putting in footage and try to change the frame rate it will not let you. Anyway, once you're done press save, I can't press it because I haven't really changed anything. Now let's try importing some footage. I would do it from the media tab. Once you're in the media tab you can select your drive and open everything up or do what I do and just drag things in. If you drag an image from a folder it will automatically open that folder in your media. So this is all the files in the folder that I'm keeping for the video you're watching right now. Our audio file we're using for our video is this one track0.wav. By dragging it into the area over here I'm adding it to my media. Then I'm gonna get some other things. So for example this free icon, this DaVinci Resolve icon, this OBS icon, this Audacity icon, this Freedom icon, and this Piggy Bank. You can preview any of your media by clicking on it and using the media preview square over here. For example if I wanted to preview this track I could click on a position in it and then press play. I can check all my audio in the meters section or go to waveform to analyze the waveform, which is kind of redundant because it's already here. Anyway, moving on to the cut area, if you wanted to do a couple of things here, then all you have to do is drag your media from up here to down here. Just like so. It's also important to note that the first time you use DaVinci Resolve, your playhead will be locked like this. If you want to change this, then click this little icon over here, and you can have a free play ad, and some people do prefer this. For example, me. It's an important thing to note at this point that you can click on DaVinci Resolve, and keyboard customization or just press Control R K to have access to all of your keyboard customization options. I don't really mess around with this a lot but if you're coming from Premiere then you might find this useful. Anyway moving over to the edit section you'll see that the media and effects library are automatically open when you open it. You can toggle them by pressing over here. You can also check your edit index by pressing here so essentially everything you've done in order. You can zoom into your editing with this little scroller over here. Some useful shortcuts are A for the regular select tool, D for the trim tool, W for the dynamic tool, and B for the blade tool. For pretty much any shortcut in any program just hover your mouse over it and it will tell you. Anyway imagine I import footage for example this American Eagle. If I select it and try to apply a transform keyframe by pressing this button over here I'll be able to view where my keyframes are by pressing this little diamond. So for example if I want one keyframe here and another keyframe here I'll just press the button again and you'll notice it shows up over there. In terms of actually moving the image you have to click on this little icon over here. You can change the aspect you're changing for example crop, dynamic zoom, open effects overlay and animation. Notations. In this case, we're doing transform. So what you do is click on this little icon to toggle the transform. If I wanted to rotate it, I would just rotate it like this and then go back here. And as you can see, it's interpolated. Effects in DaVinci Resolve are easy to work with. Click on the effects library button 
I normally detoggle the media pool when I'm doing this so I can see all of the effects. If I wanted, for example, to add some kind of drop shadow, I would go to open effects and then over here, as you can see, there's a drop shadow. So I'm gonna drop shadow to this image. Although because the background is black, I can't really see it. And that's where some useful generators come into play. By clicking on the generators button, you can generate a solid color. So I just put this color over here, change the color to something that is brighter. And as you can see, you can see the drop shadow. I would recommend taking a look at every single effect and deciding the ones you like. There's many cool generators, like for example, a four color gradient generator, so you can generate four color gradients. Every single image or object in DaVinci Resolve has every single property. So cropping, dynamic zoom, which is disabled by default, transform and composite. They can all be keyframed or you can keyframe individual aspects of them with the little diamond buttons in the inspector. You can toggle the mixer by pressing this little button over here and look at your audio. Imagine I had an image that I wanted to move. So for example, this Audacity logo, I wanted to move it from here to over here. So I would obviously create the keyframe first here Click the keyframe button so I actually see where my keyframe is. Then move it over here and I can see a preview of the path. And as you can see, these little dots point out the keyframes in that path. Not the frames shown, but the keyframes for reference. And it moves, it moves perfectly linearly. And I can modify this by clicking on the little curve tool. And you can actually take a look at the curves behind the movement. You can right click on the actual keyframe. So click on it, then right click on it. Click on ease in to ease it, and then you can modify the ease as well. So right click on this, ease out, and you can modify the ease if you want, but I personally would modify it. So by modifying the ease, it looks a little smoother. So instead of looking perfectly straight, it looks like this. Text is easy to work with in DaVinci Resolve. You go to the title section in the effects library, drag in your text, then you can click on the text. Then you can click on the text and change it. For example, I'm going to call this text text change the font here, I can change the size to make it bigger or smaller, so for example making it bigger, making it smaller, I can change the tracking as well, like that, get explode, I can definitely, I can change the line spacing, which is pretty useless because this is only really a one line text, the font styles, so I got a front, a back, a squared, I can make it lower squared, I can add alignment changes, change the anchor of the text so where it's anchored based off the actual thing by default it's anchored straight uh, position of the text like any other text the zoom in the text and if I click on the video tab you'll see that it basically treats the text as if it was an image so this is useful if you want to zoom into text or do anything else there's also pre-made fusion titles so for example this 3d lower flipping second line like this you can make your own, although these pre-made ones are pretty good. And that's my extent of DaVinci Resolve knowledge. That's all the little tips and tricks I can possibly give. You can make your keyframes smoother by right-clicking on your frames and smoothing them out. I add drop shadows in my videos, I have text in my videos. There's nothing really that complicated that I do. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I recommend you check out longer tutorials on video editing. But I'm definitely not qualified to teach that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna edit the video that we recorded. I'll be going through the editing process while making a bunch of comments so you can understand what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask me in the comments. But don't expect full guidance from this, because as I said before, video editing is an art, although maybe by watching my videos you might become unconvinced of that. Basically what I'm saying is there's no one way to make a video, and if I teach you it one way, some people might think that it's wrong and call me out for it. <laughs> Anyway, so the first thing I normally do is go through the audio and just cut everything. Go to volume. Okay, so now that I've cut all the audio, normally I add some music.
So I'll add the music, I'll cut it here, I'll put it here and decrease the volume so you can actually hear what I'm saying. And obviously I'll crop it down so it doesn't go after the video. Like this, there you go. Anyway, so that's the audio stuff done. Unless I need to add some special effects like crash noises or anything like that, that's that's all the audio mixing done. So now what I would normally do is place a background that I use, this little paper. So I'll put the paper there and then I'll extend it to reach here. I'll put the Audacity logo here. Then I'll go into my effects library. Open effects. And add a drop shadow. Then I'll take the transform tool. Increase the size of it. Zoom into it. Place keyframe. Place a keyframe over here by just moving the things up. Oops. <laughs> Hold down shift and then one of the straight oops, one of the points in a cross like this. And you can you can enlarge it linearly. Well if you hold on shift on one of these, it goes all weird. However, it's the opposite without shift. Without shift, this is normal scaling. And without shift, this makes it go all weird. So, this is just zooming in. I'll also add a fade in effect. Cross dissolve. I keep calling it fade, but it's technically called a cross dissolve, but it is just a fade to me. I'll only decrease the time for the fades. Like this. So now I'll take a look at what that keyframe ends. Pop it there. If I go to the media pool. I'll add a different sheet loco. Put it there. Size effects library. Open effects. And I'll go get a drop shadow. I'll also add a blur transition because those are always fun. They look funny. So I use it so much. What I'll do here is add a keyframe at the start. What I'll do is I'll zoom it down so that it feels more, feels more dynamic. So it goes, this goes big and this goes small. Make sure the keyframe is here. Now I'll uh, add the thumbnail for the video to represent the video. So I'll put this here. So I won't have it just static. What I'll do is normally what I do is I put a keyframe around here and put a keyframe around here. I don't really have to do it because I'm going to move this anyway. Make it really, really small, and click here. Increase the time between these two keyframes. We can go big, and then in this keyframe, make it a little smaller. Then in here, make it bigger. Zooms in. Put this at the end. And boom, you got yourself a quick, it quickly enlarges, and then it slowly zooms in. If you want to be really fancy, make another effect here where it goes smaller so it goes like this and you can make this squeeze a little bit so it looks like bouncy also I would decrease the time between these to make it faster animations normally look better when it comes to movements like these Now I'll add text. It says free. So titles, a text, and set this to free. Oh, whoops. Free with. So 
So what I'll do now is do some dynamic graphics where I'm gonna transform it. First of all, I'm gonna do a short section where it simply becomes bigger, like this. It goes like this. And now I'm gonna do a thing where I'm gonna split it off into two, two separate things. I'm gonna go and get other text. I'm gonna name this text Gratis. I'm gonna no, not put it there, I'll put it down. I'll put it down here. I'll take this text and copy paste it. And then I'll put it. Oh. Here, just make sure that this is also here. And I'll change this text to Libra. And what I'll do is these two texts are gonna come out of it. And I'm gonna really move this to that, this here to the back. What these two are gonna do is they're gonna fade in. Cross dissolve. Just the time for the cross dissolve. And I'm gonna add keyframes so they come out of the main one. So clicking on this, it's gonna go. Let's get set a keyframe here real quick. For reference, so I can actually come back to where it is. Here, I want it to be at the exact center, so it's gonna. Obviously, I'm going to put this frame right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with this, where I'm going to set, first of all, a keyframe here for it, and then a keyframe here. Center. So now, I want to make it smoother. I click on it. Apparently can't do that for some reason, but so that's our effect. I'm also going to take this opportunity to press Control S and save the project. I'm going to call it Tutorial Video. Now I'm going to save it. There we are. Now, I'm gonna get a nice picture of the eagle we had before and use it here. And what I'll do is I'll just zoom him in. the size of this, keyframe there, even here where it's big, so now, now we're gonna keyframe this as well, frame it, increase the size, so it goes like this, make sure the keyframe is at the end, it goes like this. I'll also add, uh, Cross dissolve between them. I'll make it short because the animation is on overlap, so I'll make it short. Okay, so now I'm going to import a picture of Tux. And so you can actually see Tux. I'm gonna add the background. And because I'm adding the background, I'm gonna add... Because I'm adding the background, I'm gonna add a drop shadow. 
And obviously I'm gonna make it zoom in. At this point I can just take these two things, put them here. And I'll do the exact same effect. This time, both texts are gonna have gonna be black, so you can actually see them, and they're not completely invisible. And I'm also gonna increase their size. Sixty-eight. One, sixty-eight. Then scroll down here. There's a drop shadow. Make sure to add that. Like that. So it's going to be like this. Now I'm going to have a picture of OBS. And it's going to be the OBS logo zooming in. Drop shadow. I'm gonna add the keyframes from here. And one here. This, for example, is a web page. Uh oh, we, we've run into a problem. In this section of the video, I say this is a web page and I need to record it with OBS. So so we can add this part of the video in. Let's go and learn how to use OBS. When you first open OBS, it might try to start its own initial setup. Whether you go through it or not, I would still recommend changing some settings in it. To do that, first of all, click on the little settings button over here. Then, go to whatever settings you want to change and change them. In my case, I would change the video settings to 1080p and then 60. And then my output settings, I would set my video bitrate to 4500 kilobytes per second. My recording path to user folders, videos. My recording quality, same as stream. My recording format, MP4. Obviously, these are all up to personal preference, but be sure to change them if anything goes wrong. Anyway, once you've changed all the settings you need to change, click on apply and then OK. Now let's learn how to actually record our screen in OBS. I've already made a very simple guide on this. The way OBS works is that there's scenes and sources. Scenes are simply collections of sources. Think of sources as many little connected devices going into one main controller that is the scene. These can include audio files, images, media files like videos, and of course a display capture. So to capture our display, the first thing we're going to do is create a new scene. I'm going to name this scene Scene. So selecting the scene in the scene section, I'm going to create a new source by pressing this little plus button. We're going to create a display capture source. I'm going to name it display capture 2 as I already have a display capture. Then press OK. As you can see, it's capturing our display. If you get a black screen here, do not fret. At least on Windows, you need to switch your graphics card by typing in graphics in your settings, going to your graphics settings, then open up the OBS executable by browsing for it, pressing this little browse button, and once you get it in this list, click on it and change its GPU to power saving. That only really applies to NVIDIA laptops though, because those are pretty messy. Anyway, once you have this, just press OK, and boom, we're recording our screen. Every single source in OBS can be scaled, like this, and if I hold down Shift, I can scale it like this. All we're gonna need is a simple output of the display to record what we need to record. Once I've decided what I want to record, I'm gonna go back to OBS and press start recording. Then, go back to here, and I don't know, slowly scroll down the page, to make the video a little bit more dynamic. Once I'm done, I'm either going to press the assigned key to stop the recording, or go back to OBS and press stop recording. And that's it, we recorded our footage. Now let's go add it back in DaVinci Resolve. Anyway, now that we're back in DaVinci Resolve, we can just take the footage from the directory where we saved it in, and drag it into our project, like so. I'm gonna cut the audio because we don't really need it. I'll trim the sides, and this will be our footage. I'm also going to enlarge it so you can't see the taskbar and other things. This, for example, is a web page, and I'm zooming into it right now. To do the zooming in effect, I'm going to keyframe it, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna select it, 
activate a transform keyframe my playhead somewhere else zoom into it and that's that done and i'm zooming into it right now that's pretty much it in terms of video making thank you very much for watching that's a tutorial video done with all the footage and everything we need now let's go to deliver to render it we're gonna give it a name and i'm gonna save it to my videos file. I'm also going to save it in mp4 format and make sure all of this matches my video data. Anyway, now that I can confirm that everything here is correct, I'm going to click on add to render queue. This is my render queue and I'm going to press start render. And now we wait. Okay, so now that the render is done, we can go and open up our videos folder and as you can see, our video is there. We can now pretty much delete this project unless you want to keep it. Now, what would a YouTube video be without a thumbnail? And to create the thumbnail for a video, we're gonna be using GIMP. First of all, let's start by creating a new file. I'd recommend making a thumbnail of 1920 by 1080. Let's press OK, and we have our canvas. Now, normally when I make a thumbnail, I just add an image, like for example, the logo of DaVinci Resolve. Then I use this tool called the Unified Transform tool. So click on it, then click on the layer. And as you can see, I'm able to move it. So I can do this. This, 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 this. What I'm gonna do is hold on shift and put it over here. By holding down shift, you're basically keeping it so it only moves on one axis perfectly straight. I'm gonna stretch these points up out here to make it a little bit more dynamic and interesting. I'm gonna hold on shift and drag this along so I can get it a little bit longer, it looks more realistic. And now I'm gonna use the text tool to add some text. As you can see, I dragged it out and I'm gonna write some text. I wrote my text and now I'm gonna increase the size by increasing this little slider over here. And I can choose the font from here. So I can have this font, that font, all these many fonts. I'm gonna stick, normally I just go and stick with a font named Oswald. Here, I can edit other aspects of the text as well. For example, the vertical spacing over here. I'm just gonna increase the size again, make it anchored this way. Then click on the Unified Transform tool, click on the text, and so now I can transform it. I'm gonna place it over here, stretch it a little bit. And as you can see, I've modified it to make it look a little bit more thematic. Anyway, if I wanna add things like drop shadows, I'm gonna go to Filters, Lights and Shadow, Drop Shadow, and a drop shadow will be added to the current layer. Switching to the Vinci logo, I'm gonna also add a drop shadow. I'm also gonna add that paper background I use so much to my image. I'm gonna drag it down here so it's the lowest one. And as you can see, our thumbnail is now complete. Now, like video editing, image editing is also an art. You should make the thumbnail how you want it to. I only ever do use the text tool, the transform tool, and a couple of filters to make my thumbnails, so I don't really have much more to offer in terms of teaching. If you really wanted to, you could use the blur tool over here and blur your background, or if you wanted to be more efficient, you could select your image, go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and increase the blur. And there we go, we have our thumbnail. So now that we have our thumbnail, let's go actually upload our video. Okay, here's the easy part. In your YouTube studio, click on the upload button, then drag your video file into the upload zone, give it a name, give it a description, upload the thumbnail, add to it to a playlist if needed, and that's it. Except it's totally not. We need to add some tags. Now this video isn't actually going to be public, so all the tags I'm about to write, I'm just going to delete. But some ideas for tags for a tutorial video would be tutorial and then name of the softer, so in this case, DaVinci Resolve, or Tutorial Audacity, and such. Anyway, add any more information if you want. I guess the category will be Science Technology, or if you really think about it, it's Technically Education. Anyway, once you're done with this, click on Next to add your video elements. You can add your end screens and cards, although these things are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go through them. Then press Next and select whether you want to publish your video now, or schedule it. I'm gonna publish it now and set it to unlisted because I don't want my video uploaded to everyone when it's just a video we made in a tutorial. Now press done and provided your video has uploaded, you'll either wait for it to upload and then process or it will 
upload. And that's a video up on YouTube. We've successfully made a video with only free software. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial easy to use, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Obligatory reminder to subscribe, like, and rate this video 5 stars. If only YouTube still had ratings. Anyway, as I said before, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. This video was surprisingly not sponsored by Adobe.